Chiro here for Ember Games with a review of Puyo Puyo Tetris, played on PlayStation 4, but also available on Nintendo Switch and lacking a localized version for Xbox One. Where mobile games like Angry Birds have taken over the market in recent years, the common reply from everyone a couple decades ago when asked if they played video games would often result in at least knowing and having a little bit of experience with Tetris. Puyo Puyo is a bit less known in the West, but it has reared its head a few times, once disguised as Kirby's Avalanche on Super Nintendo, once disguised as Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine on Sega Genesis, on Game Boy Advance a version of Puyo Pop was out, and Puyo Pop Fever on GameCube released in the West as well. I never realized Kirby and Sonic match games were actually Puyo games, as the Match 3 or Match 4 games got really popular around that time, and it seemed like they were just doing what they did with the kart racers. If you had a popular franchise, you have to have a puzzle game for it. Now, Tetris is all about filling up lines completely by attempting to place shapes quickly as they fall down the screen. Now, I haven't played a recent version of Tetris, but one added feature is the ability to hold a piece with a quick button press. This lets you swap out whatever's currently falling once with what's in your hold box. If you have something that just doesn't seem to fit, it's a good way to strategize, and also lets you hold on to those line blocks, as they never seem to be around when you need them. Puyo is a match 4 game where colored blobs fall in a similar way to Tetris, and as long as four of the same color are touching on top, bottom, left, or right, not diagonally, they will pop and give you score. It's interesting to me that my fairly polished Dr. Mario skills don't necessarily translate for three major reasons. The first is there are four to five Puyo colors at a time. Secondly, if you place a set of two Puyos sideways, they'll break apart and fall until the second one hits. And finally, matching two different sets of Puyos with the same piece on the same coordinate doesn't count as a combo. It only works if you set a chain reaction. There's some lessons to get noobs like me started that teach you the basic stair step functionality you'll have to pick up in order to be successful. Now the key to every competitive mode in this game is your ability to string together multi-line clears. In Tetris that's 2, 3, 4, or 5, yes in certain modes it's a possibility, which will then send garbage to your opponent. In Tetris, lines with one space missing will rise from the bottom. In Puyo it rains gray garbage from the top. 90% of the game's adventure modes and arcade modes involve competing against others, be it human or AI, so you have to learn those skills quickly to survive. So, by this point you may be asking, how do the two games mesh up? Well first, you have a plethora of multiplayer and single player arcade modes to choose from. When you participate in these, each player can choose whether they want to play Tetris or Puyo, and the game has been balanced to keep things at an even fair pace. Secondly, there's a mode called Swap, where you begin playing one of the two randomly, and after ordinate amounts of time, the board flips and you play the other. After the board flips, the last Tetromino, or Puyo, will continue to fall, and if it makes a combo connection, it will send its garbage onto the currently played game, allowing you to set up some traps and focus your garbage efforts in eliminating players on one game or the other. The third way is a mode called Fusion. In this mode, both Puyos and Tetrominoes fall on the same board. You continue to match your Puyo colors, and occasionally you'll get runs of Tetrominoes, which you work on getting into the normal lines. They will smash through all Puyos until they hit the bottom or another block in true Tetris form, causing the Puyos to respawn on top once the piece is settled. The plus side is any Puyo garbage will be destroyed for good, sometimes really saving your round. Especially with the hold option available for saving a line to wipe out a 4 block width can really help. You add garbage to your opponent with line and Puyo combos in this mode, so you can really set up some elaborate moves, if you can think that far ahead. Now I won't go too in depth on all the various modes, the one I spent the most time with was the adventure one. Here you go through 70 stages, accomplishing various goals in both Tetris and Puyo, with lengthy skippable cutscenes from what I think are longtime characters of the Puyo series. Going through a dilemma about the dimensions of the two games merging, and every problem anyone has is solved in a match of Puyo or Tetris. Now in addition to meeting the level objective, you can go above and beyond in a star ranking, with up to 3 stars per stage to obtain 100% completion. I worked hard at the start to stay at 100%, but over halfway through the fast falling Puyo matches and the battle modes just started to get time consuming and frustrating to get that third star. Now I have two resonating frustrations with the adventure modes design. The first is getting a target score where you have to eliminate an opponent. The time based elimination stages for 3 stars make way more sense, because the fastest way to get high scores is through combos. The bigger the combos, the more trash and the faster you'd beat the opponent. So it's almost like punishing you for doing well. It does seem like true random AI though, as sometimes they'd be smart enough to get out of a trap. At one point I had a 12 minute match going, and another, a couple quick combos took care of the entire match. There are varying levels of AI difficulty assigned to each of these stages, so I know that was part of it, but still. The other annoyance is party mode, where random power-ups drop constantly, and a line or Puyo Pop activates them. 
While great in theory, I think I had five times likelihood of getting the searchlight, causing darkness to an AI opponent that doesn't need to see anyway, while constantly getting nailed by a score vacuum power up by my rival, draining my score over and over. Playing the story mode unlocks new characters for you to use in the arcade modes, as well as being a great way to accumulate credits. These credits can be spent in the shop to buy alternate voice packs, as well as textures for your Puyos and Tetrominos. So as I keep saying, there are quite a few modes. Let's see, which ones haven't I mentioned? Uh, Big Bang is a quick thumb mode where you have all the pieces in place to clear lines or Puyos, and you have to drop one exactly in the right place to start a chain reaction. Then Challenge mode has six additional options, including Endless Fever, Endless Puyo, Tiny Puyo, and Sprint and Marathon modes for Tetris, trying to get a high score while getting X number of lines. The only thing really missing is an Endless Tetris mode, which seemed a bit odd at first, but then when I thought about it, it's probably the licensing deal. The only thing I've ever really seen in versions of Tetris that I've played is an Endless mode. So maybe the licensor, which is officially called the Tetris Company, restricted it so for those of us wired for Tetris Endless, we'll actually go buy another copy of the game where they're getting a bigger cut. Now, I've only tried a couple times, but thus far I've had no luck from trying the Puzzle League online option or free play. I had one guy from the UK show up once when looking for a match, but I sat there waiting for him to confirm the game to start for longer than three minutes, so I just backed out. I came back in and sat with an empty search screen. So at least at this moment, don't buy this game on PS4 hoping for random online play, whether it's just the participant pool or the technology to connect them or everyone bought it on Switch. I'm not sure. The graphics are full of bright colors and cute objects, just like you'd expect to see at a Japanese arcade. The soundtrack, of course, goes J-pop, but has some pretty fun remixes of the classic Tetris music that we know and love. Overall, Puyo Puyo Tetris brings a very cool fusion between two huge puzzle franchises, one the US hasn't had much exposure to, a fun story mode with targeted matches and ranking criteria, a ridiculous story with very anime-style art and humor, alleged online play, and a crazy number of game options for both franchises, featuring solo and local 1-4 player versus and team matches to keep those frantic puzzle gamers entertained for hours. Rated as a frantic puzzle game, Puyo Puyo Tetris receives an 88 out of 100, with 50 being an average game. This is Jiro for Umber Games. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to hit subscribe for more video notifications, or follow me on Twitter, at Umber Games.